Hello everyone, welcome to our channel, Let's Decode. We hope you all liked our previous video on Snake Game. If you guys haven't watched it yet, link is in the description. Please check that out. You will definitely like it, okay? We all know, in this modern world, we're so used to looking at digital clocks everywhere, in railway stations, bus stops, wristwatches and even in our mobile phones. Analog Clock sent us a threatening message last night that its ego was hurt, so, just to make it feel a little happy, today we're going to tell you how to create an analog clock. So without further delay let's jump into it. Let's divide this into 5 parts so we can complete it easily, 1. Experiment the plot function. 2. Know some basics of date time function. 3. Draw static clock. 4. Give life to the clock. 5. Making fun by creating multiple clocks. Are you with me? Okay, let's start our session. Let's play with plot function. Our agenda is to draw uppercase letter I using MATLAB plot function. Is it possible? Yes, everything is possible here. Let's see. If we want to plot I like this on X and Y axis, we should know its coordinates first. Take these points as the coordinates of our plot. Then the points are like this. For the lower horizontal line, the points are 1 1, 2 1, 3 1, and so on, 10 1. For the upper horizontal line, the points are 1 10, 2 10, 3 10, and so on, 10 10. For the vertical line, the points are 5 1, 5 2, 5 3, and so on, 5 10. I hope you understand what we are going to do. Now open MATLAB. Create new script. Now create those points, we already discussed separately as X and Y coordinates. If you don't understand how I wrote these points, feel free to pause the video, go back and check these points with what I discussed before. You will understand then. Now, plot them using plot function. If you observe it closely, MATLAB plot function consider it as multiple inputs when we give a multi-dimensional array and it plots column wise. Now how to overcome this? There are multiple ways present to overcome this problem. Let's see one by one. First transpose the matrix, then first row becomes first column, which contains the points of upper line, and plot them as a group. If you don't understand, don't be panic, in next step you will understand it. Let me put the limits of the plot, so it will be easy to observe. Here in axis, first two elements represent, the lower and upper limits of x axis, and next two is for y in the same way. Previously, we made a 3 by 10 matrix for X and Y coordinates separately. Now make them as a row vector like this. Now plot it. Yup, we got it. I hope you understand it, if not tell us in the comment section below. Now explore some more features of the plot function. First is changing the color of the line. MATLAB plot function supports some colors, which are represented like this. Let's check it. Yes, color changes. Now increasing the line width of the line drawn. Let's see how it will turn out. Wow, it easy to identify now. Use figure command to create a new window every time you plot. We can see that. It plots on a new window every time we run it. Let's go back. Does it's the only use of figure command? No, there are many. Let's check them one by one. We can name the window using name property. If we run it, we can observe the name here. But still have the figure 1 in it, don't worry, we can get rid of it using number title. Make the number title property off, and run it. We overcame it. Then what's next? Let's disable the axis. It's looking good now. Now change the background of the figure window. We can observe the change. Wait, do we need these menu bars? I don't need them, so I will remove them. I like this. But the color is too odd. Let's change it. Oh it's completely white. Try another. Maybe girls like it very much I think. Let's stop here. Try other combinations also. Before moving forward, let's discuss another function, title, which put the title to our plot, not to the window. I hope you got the difference between them. We just completed the line. But how to draw signals like sine and cosine? Let's try that also. Create some points from 0 to 360 degrees. I don't think that's our desired result. 
What's the problem? Maybe it's because of the function we used. Try another function. It's working fine. But what's the problem with the previous one? Maybe this, sine take the input arguments as radians, and sine d takes the inputs as degrees. So now try sine function and plot both in different figures. They are same. Similarly, we can generate cosine also. Now plot both sine and cosine in the same figure, using hold on option. It enables to write on the previous plot without clearing it. But which is sine which is cosine? Differentiate them using legend function, which shows like this. We can increase the number of oscillations like this. Done with lines and signal. Next is how to draw circle. Before that let's know some math behind it. A point and plane can be represented by the distance from the x and y axis respectively. If we change it to polar coordinates, which deals with the length and angle, the same point can be represented in the form like this. Where r is the distance to the point from the origin, and theta is the angle between the line and x-axis. What if we move that point by changing the angle and keep the length constant, it will form the circle. Then circle can be represented like this, where theta runs from 0 to 360. Let's try it in MATLAB. Yup we got it. We can change the width. Radius can be changed by multiplying its coordinates with constant. We can see that here. Let's draw the origin using line function. I hope you understand these properties, I don't want to waste the time by discussing every single property. How about telling the viewer that, it's the origin by placing text there. Let's do it. Text function places text on plane at points mentioned in it. Yup we got it. What if we want to delete what the plot previously draw? We can do that like this. We plot a line from 1 to 100, and we stored it in a variable x. Then after 1 second we delete that variable, which in turn deletes the plot also. Let's check it. Didn't you observe it? Let me increase the delay so you can observe it. Got it? Yup, with this we completed our first part on plots. In this part, we will discuss two ways to get the current time of PC. Let's check. First way is using date time function. Date time function has many uses, we will know some of them in next few minutes. Date time now gives the present time. Let's run it. We got the present date and time. Other way to get current date time is using clock function. But the difference is date time function creates variable of class date time, but clock return and array contains the date and time. We observe that seconds in our decimal points, they are accurate to the four decimal points. To get the nearest integer we use fix function to avoid it. Let's run it. We can observe the difference from the previous one. Let's see other uses of date time function. Using date time function, we can change an array containing values of date time into a date time class. Let's see how it works. When we run it, we can observe that it return the respective date and time to the input array. The first element is year, second is month, third is day, hours, minutes and seconds in order. What if the given an invalid month that is greater than value 12? Let's check. Date time function is to smart. It converts the values exceeds it default limits. Here it converts the 15 months into 1 year 3 months and return the date according to it. We can observe the increase of year here. The same conditions apply for remaining also. If we give the day value as 45 which at 14 days more than the days present in January, the output is 14 days past the January month, that is February 14. Similarly, same conditions work for hours, minutes and seconds also. Check them on our own. We create a date time class variable, but how to access them? Think of it. It's easy. We can use them by dot indexing method. What if we want to add some time to the date time variable? If we want to add 5 hours to the current time we do it in this way. We can observe the output current time is 17 hours and updated time is 22 hours, which is 5 hours ahead of the current time. We can also add minutes in this format. We add days using days function. How to add months? Using months function? No, we use cal months function to add month to the date. It works. Years function helps to add year to the date. But what is months function do? It returns the difference months between the two dates given. 
We completed basics related to our analog clock, now it's time to get into it. But before that, we need to understand some basics about clock. Let's have a look at it. In general X and Y plane looks like this. In polar coordinates, we calculate the angle with respect to X axis in anti-clockwise direction. It's different in case of clocks. Because 12 is the starting point, in our terminology it's the X axis in clock. All angles are measured from 12 in clockwise direction. But how to plot and work on them? Let's check them in MATLAB. First draw a circle. Change the limits for better view. Now place text of angles at 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees. We can observe that the angles move in clockwise direction. Let's take the 0 degrees to 12 hours position by adding 90 degrees to all. Now plot them. We can see that axis changes. But the direction is still different. If we invert the x-axis, then it will give our desired result. Let's check that. Put minus to the x-coordinates and plot it again. Wow we get our desired result. So our new transformed axis coordinates are like this. From now onwards we use these equations to plot any line in clock, so have a glance at it. Now let's see how to plot lines using these equations. We will plot four lines along the previously written angles, 0, 90, 180 and 270. Try along with me. Here we plot from origin to the points mentioned, at some angle with radius 1. Sorry I forget to place a bracket here. Let's check it. Similarly let's try for 8 lines for more practice. Yup, we got it. We learned many things, which are necessary to make an analog clock. Are you waiting for that? Create a figure with name analog clock, disable its number title, remove its menu bar, and change the background color to white. First draw the outer circles, at radius 12 units. Increase its line width for better view. And place axis off after plot, otherwise it won't show difference. Let's draw another circle with different color outside this present circle with radius 12.9 units. But why only 12.9 not 13 or 15? I choose one length, you can choose any arbitrary length, and based on that remaining element size depends. I think 12 is the optimized length, to make the clock look good. That's all, nothing more than that in it. Now fill the clock R with color you like. Now create an inner circle, the center for the clock with radius 1 unit. Let's draw a number at their respective hours positions. Before that let's see how angles change in clock. Total 360 degrees are divided into 12 hours. So each hour is at an angle n times 360 by 12, where n represents the hours. The whole 360 degrees are divided into 60 minutes. So each minute is at an angle n times 360 by 60, where n represents the minute's value. Similarly, seconds also divided as 60 parts, so each second is at an angle's n times 360 by 60. Now create a loop to place all 12 hours at their respective positions. Let's place the numbers at 8.5 units from the origin. Now check it. That's cool, it's good to increase the font size of the numbers, let's try it and run. That's fine. Now draw lines at hours place. They are narrow, let's change the color and increase the width. That's great. Let's draw minute strikes between these hours lines. Usually there are 4 lines between every hour lines with difference of angle by 6 degrees. Have a glance at these equations you will understand easily, if not, comments section won't stop you from asking your queries, make use of it. Now run it. That looks pretty. No, without hands how it can be pretty? Let's complete that and make a comment. Let's draw hours hand with length 7.5 units, minutes hand with length 9 units and seconds hand with length 10 units at some random angles. Now check how it looks like. That's beautiful, awesome, dead clock. Yes, there is no movement in it. Now, we have to give movement to the hands, that means, we have to change them based on the time, until user stops it. So create an infinite loop and place these hands drawing code in it. Let's get the current time of PC, using clock function and store it in time variable. Angle of hours, minutes and seconds hand, has to change based on the time. 
As we discussed previously, seconds hand moves 6 degrees per second, minutes hand also moves 6 degrees per minute, and hours hand moves 30 degrees per hour. We store these angles in respective variables, and we change the angles when plotting, where we gave some random values before. We will update the clock for every one second. Let's run it. Oops, we lost somewhere. What the problem here? We didn't clear the previous plots. Now do that. We should terminate the loop every time by pressing Ctrl plus C, otherwise it still plots, because the loop is still running. We will solve that problem at the end, don't worry. Let's create some empty variables to store the plots. Delete them initially and then save the plot again in it. Do the same for the remaining plots also. Now run the clock. Yup we solved it. Now observe the clock carefully, you have to tell me what you observed. Do you find anything? Yes. If you find that minutes hand moves only after completing 60 seconds, then you are with me. If you want to move the minutes hand continuously, instead of taking large step at once, let's check this. Change these equation by including the dependence on other parameters also. But what exactly they do, let's see. Minutes hand moves 6 degrees per minute. If we want to depend its value on seconds also, then total 6 degrees has to moved in 60 seconds, so we add that value to it. Similarly, for hours hand also, we have to move 30 degrees in 60 minutes, so we add that value to it. Let's run it and check. We can observe that minutes hand moves more often than what we saw previously. Do you notice that seconds hand didn't align with the lines we draw? Yes, that's because of the fractional value of seconds. To remove that, use fix function and run that again. Yes, it's moving correctly now. As I promised you, to help and get rid of errors we get due to infinite loop, let's work on that. Go to figure and use another property, close request function, which runs the function given when we close the window. Declare global variable cc which represents the main figure and close request which represent the close status. Make the close status false initially. Let's create that function we called in close request function. And change the global variable as true. Now in the main loop, check for the condition when close request variable is high. If it's high then we delete the figure, clear all the variables and break out of infinite loop. I hope you got the point. See whether it's working or not. Yes, it is working. Yup it's time to comment. We made a beautiful, awesome working clock. Now what's remaining? Playing with them. We created the clock and running it successfully. Let's make some necessary changes to our previously written code. Start from the figure. Create a function, named figure setup, to create the figure and its properties. End it here. Create another function draw clock, and put all these code in it. Call draw clock in figure setup. We should declare the functions only at the end, so move these functions to end. Call figure setup at the beginning. Let's check whether it's working properly or not. Yup it's working. We forget to call the global variable in the function let's do it. Now, use date time function to get the current date and time of the PC. As we previously discussed, use dot indexing method to call the elements in it. Now run it. It's working good. But the seconds hand is not aligned. So use fix function to round them to nearest integer values. That's great. Move these commands to another function named update time function. Declare the global variables. Call the update time function in the loop. It's working fine. What's next? Making multiple clocks. Excited? Let's complete it. Now go to figure setup function and create two subplots in the main window and draw separate clocks in each plot. Now go to main loop and create another time variable with time 2 hours ahead current time. Now update time in both plots and run it. Oops, that doesn't work. Maybe because of, we use same function to update the time of different clocks. So it plots in one clocks and clears it. That's the reason we see time in only one clock. To avoid it, we have to create another function for it. Let's copy and paste the code and do changes. Also create variables required. 
Now change the function. Check it works or not. Yup it's working. We can see, there is time difference of 2 hours, exactly as what we give. Ever saw the wall of clocks, where we find the time of different countries? Let's see this. It's wonderful right? Give it a try. We gave all the inputs required. Now go and try it on your own. We want every one of you to complete it. Thank you for bearing with us till the end of the video, hope you all liked this video. If you still have any doubt regarding this topic, feel free to ask us in the comment section. If you liked this video, please continue to support us with your likes and comments. Do subscribe so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. And if you aren't following our Instagram page yet, do follow, we've been uploading some technology updates. You can clarify your doubts there as well. Share your valuable suggestions with us in the comments section below. Thank you once again and sayonara.